All right, guys, we'll move on to question six. And here it says in this question, take pi to be 22 over 7. It says the diagram below shows a rectangular tank with a base of 50 centimeter by 40 centimeter that is used to store water. The tank is filled with water to a depth of 15 centimeter. Calculate the volume of water in the tank. Now, there are several ways to look at this diagram. We can look at it as a prism, which means it has a uniform cross section. The cross section is rectangle. Now, for, to find a volume of any prism, you simply find the area of the cross section, which in this case would be the area of the base, which is actually a rectangle. If I were to take it out, I would have a rectangle that is 40 centimeter by 50 centimeter. So once I get the area of this base, I simply multiply by the height of the water in the tank to get the volume of water, all right? So I can actually say that volume is equal to base, V is for volume, base area multiplied by height. Or we can say volume equal to length times width times height. If you think of it, thinking of it from the perspective of a cuboid, right? It's always good to look at it from the point of a prism because with all prisms, the volume is simply the base area times the height. So the volume here would be 40 centimeter multiplied by 50 centimeter multiplied by the height of the water in the tank, which is gonna be 15 centimeter, all right? So the volume is equal to, and of course, here's a case where you can simply just put all this inside of your calculator, all right? So let me see, I'm gonna have 40 times 50 times 15, that's 30,000. So it's gonna be 30,000 cubic centimeter, all right? That would be the volume of water in the tank. All right, let's now move on to the second part of question six, to 6B. It says the cylindrical container shown in the figure below is used to fetch more water to fill the rectangular tank. The container, which is completely filled with water, has a radius of 20 centimeter and a height of 21 centimeter. All the water in the container is added to the rectangular container. Calculate the total volume of water now in the rectangular container. Now let us put down the volume that we know is in there already. All right, so the volume of rectangular container, we found out to be 30,000 cubic centimeters. Let's put that there. Now, since this is filled with water, let's calculate the volume that it holds. Once again, this is actually what we call a prism because it has a uniform cross section. It means anywhere you cut it along here, across, you're gonna get a circle. So you have a circle, circle stuck right through, which means that to find the volume, all you have to do is find the area of the base and multiply by the height, similar to how we did the rectangular container. So volume is equal to base area times height. So base area multiplied by height. All right, let's get right into it. The base is a circle. So it's gonna be pi r square for the area of the circle times the height. Now they said in initially use pi as 22 over seven. Very important that to remember that. So it's 22 over seven multiplied by the radius, which is 20 squared, multiplied by the height, which is 21. Once again, your calculator works nicely here. And I'm, all I'm gonna have to do is plug all this inside of my calculator, right? So I'm gonna have 22 fraction bar seven, all right, multiplied by 20 squared. You have a button for squared, multiplied by 21, all right? So that's 26,400. So this is gonna be 26,400 cubic centimeters. Right, so the total volume now, so total volume in tank equal, it would be the 30,000 that you have in there already, all right, added to this amount that you're going to pour in there, which is 26,400 cubic centimeters. So in all, that is going to give me 56,400 cubic centimeters. This represents the total amount of water now in the tank after you'd have poured a cylindrical container in it. All right, let's move down to the next part of the question. It says, show that the new depth of water in the rectangular tank is 28.2 centimeters. All right, I'll put on some important piece of information here. We can all agree that the volume that we just found that is now in the tank is 56,400. All right, so we need to find the new height of water in the tank. 
Now, what is sure that will not change is that the base area of the tank will not change. The height of the water can change, but the base area remains the same. Now, remember also that for a prism, volume is equal to base area times the height. We have the volume, which is 56,400 cubic centimeters. The base area would be 40 multiplied by 50. The height is what we currently don't know. So this is going to be 56,400 equal 2,000 h. All right. So all I have to do is divide both sides by 2,000. So over 2,000 and this over 2,000. So h is equal to, let me bring up my calculator here. That makes this pretty easy. All right. So I'm going to have 56,400 divided by 2,000. All right, 28.2. So the height is 28.2 centimeters, which is exactly what they want. So we can say QED, which means that which has been proven. Okay, let's take it down a bit more. The vertical height of the rectangular tank is 48 centimeters. Determine how much cylindrical containers of water must be poured into the rectangular tank for it to be completely filled. Okay, all right, so we want to know how much more, all right? So we're gonna have to find the rest of the tank that is not filled with water. So if it is filled up to a height of 28.2, that means we can find the height not yet filled. All right, so let me find the height not filled. So the height not filled would be equal to 40. No, not 40, sorry. They yeah, said so that the height, let me go back up a bit. The height of the tank is 40, 48 centimeters. So it's gonna give me 48, I'm gonna put that here. So it's gonna be 48 minus to where it is now, which is 28.2. Once again, you can always use your calculators. You don't want to make any errors here. So you're gonna have 48 minus 28.2, which is 19.8. So this is equal to 19.8 centimeters. Now the rest of the tank that is not yet filled is also gonna be a cuboid because as we said, it has a uniform cross section, all right? It's gonna be a cuboid, but the beauty about it is that the dimension of the base is the same because it's a prism and it's uniform right throughout. So the volume yet not filled, so you're still gonna have your 40 by your 50. This is the part, this, imagine that this is the top part of the tank that is not filled. And the height here is gonna be 19.8. That's the remaining height that needs to be filled. So once again, I can find the volume of the part not filled. So volume is equal to base area times height, or the same formula going right throughout, right? So it's gonna be, we just found the base area, which was 2000. So it's gonna be 2000 multiplied by 19.8. All right, let's see. Bring up my calculator. So it's 2000 times 19.8. That's 39,600. So it's 39,600 cubic centimeters. Now, the question is, how many more cylindrical containers of water must be poured? So the number of containers, it would be equal to the volume that you have here, which is 39,600 divided by the volume for the cylindrical container. All right, because you want to know how much of the cylindrical container. Let's, let's go back up for the cylindrical container. The volume of a cylindrical container was 26,400. So I'm gonna divide this by 26,400. So over 26,400. Let us ensure that you get a concept here. We said that since the height of the tank is 48 centimeters and the water is filled up to 28.2, then we simply subtract the 28.2 from the 48 to find a height not yet filled with water. The dimensions of the tank in terms of the base would be the same. All right, because it's actually a prism. 
So in order to find the volume needed to fill the tank, we would still have the 40 by 50. The only difference being the height, because the height is the only one thing that varies in the tank, the height of the water in the tank. So we find the volume that needs to, be, needs to fill the tank. We need this more amount of water to fill the tank. But the question is, is how many cylindrical containers? So I'm going to take the volume that I need to fill the tank and divide it by the volume of one cylindrical container. All right. This will tell me how many cylindrical containers we need. All right. This is, again, is a calculator work. So let me just move this over a bit. So I already have a 39,600 in there. So I'm just going to divide it by the 26,400, which is 1.5. So I'm going to have 1.5 cylindrical containers needed. All right. And that will be the end of this particular question. All right, guys, we move to question seven. It says the diagram below shows a sequence of figures made up of circles with dots. Each figure has one dot at the center and four dots on the circumference of each circle. The radius of the first circle is one unit. The radius of each new circle is one unit greater than the radius of a previous circle. Except the first figure, a portion of each of the other region is shaded. Okay, all right, let's go down. So we can look at the figures here. We can see what's going on. So we have four figures. All right, complete the rows and column below. Now, of course, we, when it comes on to sequence and series, we have to look at patterns that is taking place in the table. So you have one, two, three, four, five going down. Now notice you have number of dots. You have five, then nine, then 13, then 17. What you'd realize here is that if you subtract five from nine, you get four. You subtract nine from 13, you get four. You subtract 13 from 17, you get four. So we can assume that we're constantly adding four with a number of dots. You can also go back at the pattern and look. So if I add 17 plus four, I'm gonna end up with 21. All right, that part is over. Now, if you look at the column, the area of the outer circle. All right, if you look at the you have one pi, four pi, nine, 16, 25. So this is why you need to know the different types of numbers because you'd realize that these are now square numbers, all right? If you look at the shaded region, you have, well, one pi, you can just assume it's one pi, then you have three pi, then you have five pi, then you have seven pi. Notice that you're going up by two pi, right? One plus two is three, three plus two is five, and five plus two is seven. You can ignore the pi because when you add like terms, you simply add the coefficients. All right, so you can assume that since this is five, which is the one after four, then this is gonna be nine pi. You add two more. All right, let's go into this column. You have two pi, then six pi, then 12 pi, then 20 pi. Notice at first you added what? At first you add two. No, at first you add four. Then if you subtract, Six from 12, you get six, so you add two more, which is six, and then 20 minus 12, that's eight. So you know you're gonna be adding 10 this time. So you're gonna have 20 plus 10, which is gonna give you 30 pi. All right, over here is a bit different because the number that you're adding is constantly changing. So that makes a big difference. All right, let's go to the general formula. All right, now there's a way to decide. There's an easy way to work out the general formula. I'm going up by four in this column. So I can just say it's gonna be 4n. But all I need to know is now how do I manipulate this formula to get the first term? So if you have 4n, if you put one in the place of n, four times one is four, but you need to get five. So you're gonna to have to add one to that, all right? So you see what we did there? Since we're going up by four, we quickly just write on 4n. Then we look at it again and we say, all right, let us see if we can get the first term, which is five. When we put one in the place of n, we should get five. But if I replace n with one, I'm gonna get four. So I need to add one to it to get five. All right, that's all that the picture. Over here is not too bad because one square is one, two square is four, three square is nine, four square is 16, five square is 25. So you can assume that this is gonna be n square 
times pi, whatever n is. All right, let's look at this column now. You have one pi, then three pi, then five pi, then seven. So you keep on going up by two. Okay, so what does that tell me? That tells me that to get the formula here, I'm gonna put down two n, right? Because I'm going up by two. But how do I get one pi? If you replace n by one, you're gonna get two. So you're gonna to have to subtract one. I'm gonna to have to put that in a bracket and attach a pi there because all this needs to multiply the pi. All right, so if I were to put two in this, I know I should get three pi, let's see. Two times two is three. Two times two is four. Four minus one is three, so I have three pi. So whatever formula you come up with, you test it by using the values for n, which is the figures above. So if you put four in there, you should get seven pi. Two times four is eight, and eight minus one is seven. So you have a seven pi, so you're good to go. All right, you have two, then six, then 12, then 20, then 30. We don't know what n is, so we can just assume that, all right, the next number that I'm gonna go up by is 12 since I went up by 10. You have to find a way to generalize this formula. So we have two, six, 12, 20. Now let's look over here. If you look over here, you notice that one times two is two here. Two times, so you have to, you see, when it comes on to pattern, and there's a lot of ways that you can pick up pattern. To get six, it's two times three, which is the next number. That gives you six. To get 12, you could think of it as three times four. To get 20, you can think of it as four times five. So you can think of, think of it as n, and a number that comes after n. So it will be n, the number after n is gonna be n plus one, right? If you have six, after six is seven. Seven is really six plus one. So it's just the same concept as n, and you simply attach a pi to it, all right? And you'd have gotten seven easy marks there, all right? Not so bad at all. Okay, let's go down and see what part B has in store for us. All right, it says the term in number, the value of n when the number of dots when the number of dots in the figure is five hundred and forty-one. So I'm gonna look for the column with the number of dots. That's 4n plus 1. So we are saying that the number of dots is equal to 541. So you simply take the formula and say that 4n plus 1 is to equal to 541. All right, we transpose it like a regular equation. So 4n equal to 541 minus 1. 4n is equal to 540. And of course, you know, we're going to have to divide both sides by 4 to get n. Now, you can simply use a calculator, all right? You don't want to go wrong because sometimes you get nervous in the exam. So let's just use a calculator. So we have 540 divided by four, and we see 135 here. So N is equal to 135, all right? So we're good to go there. All right, let's go down a bit now. Write down in terms of P and pi, the area of the largest surface All right, guys, so write down part C, write down in terms of P and pi, the area of the largest figure in 3P, in figure 3P. All right, so in other words, you have, let's go back up. You have figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four. Now, notice in the table, figure four is represented by the number four. Figure one is represented by the number one, all right, because that's the number of circles. So... The figure number is actually 3p in this question. So that's what it means. And you want the area of area of outer circle or the largest circle is n square pi. All right. So when you have figure 3p, let me just put this now. So in the figure section, it would be 3p. All right. And the area of a larger circle, according to the formula that we have up here, is n square pi. So n represents a figure which is 3p. So n is gonna be equal to 3p. So I'm gonna have 3p squared times pi. Now laws of NEC say if you're multiplying two things to a power, then both of them would be raised to a power. So in other words, I can say three squared is nine and p squared is p squared and we attach the pi. So this will be the area of the largest figure in figure 3p. A larger circle in figure 3p, right? Very important. So we have to make sure we read the instructions carefully. 